Hello, everybody. This is Tim here again with Boomer Secret Heat, and I'm joined by Chris the Master <laughs> from Chris the Master. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy that likes to come over here and visit these guys at Boomstick Critique and bother them yeah. all day. You shoot the shit. You shoot <laughs> the shit. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're here basically with a review for three Tim Burton movies, three class, well, one class, uh, two classics in my opinion, uh, or well, and uh, one not so classic. But we'll get into these. We got Edward Scissorhands. Classic. We got Alice in Wonderland. Not so classic. <laughs> we got uh, Sweeney Todd. Classic, in my opinion. Uh, not really considered a classic. It's not like an old school film. New Age classic. But uh, classic enough. Anyway, we'll just jump in with Edward Scissorhands first. I'll just go ahead and get my rating. Four stars to this movie, in my opinion. Probably my favorite Tim Burton movie. What about you? What are you? Edward Scissorhands. I give, it, rating I give it nine scissor fingers out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Huh. He gives it nine nine scissor fingers out of ten. But look, oh wait, would you consider it your favorite Tim Burton movie? Mm, it's not my favorite, no. Corpse Bride is my favorite. I love it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> gives me feelings in places I didn't know I had feelings. Uh, corpse fucker. <laughs> no, not, I'm not a corpse fucker. No, I just... I just, I thought it was a good movie. Uh, I had to throw that in there. But anyway, uh, yeah, as far as Edward Scissorhands go, in my opinion, it's like Tim Burton's masterpiece film. It's pretty much like a personal autobiography film for him. Uh, the Edward Scissorhands, the character, is pretty much a uh, version of himself. He's even got his own frizzy top hair like he does. Yeah, yeah, he, he sees himself as like an outsider type person, Tim Burton does, and he fits with the character of the movie. Um, what's the thing about Johnny Depp's acting performance? Yeah, forget about as, those scissor fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think about Johnny Depp's acting performance as the character. Johnny Depp's acting performance. Yeah, he was really. Well, he didn't actually have an English accent when he did it. it no. Kind of seemed like what he was going for. Uh, I was going for a uh, uh, Oliver Twist. Yeah, Oliver <laughs> with a Twist. Do you have some seconds? <laughs> but but anyway, we'll save that for Sweeney Todd. But anyway, um, but yeah, Johnny Depp's acting performance. He's really quiet and doesn't speak much, but he gives off like a really emotional, sentimental type vibe. It really makes you root for him, especially when a lot of other people in the town that he's in are douchebags. Pretty much the story of the movie, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, is uh, it's pretty much like a Frankenstein type story, but with a lot of charm and Tim Burton's like gothic uh, German expressionism type Kind of very Pin Pinocchio-ish. Yeah, yeah in, a, in a way, yeah, Pinocchio-ish. But yeah, pretty much you got Edward Scissorhands, you got Vincent Price, I believe this is his final mm -hmm. film role. Um, which sucks, but uh, yeah, Vincent Price pretty much created Edward Scissorhands in the movie. Edward Scissorhands, you get hinted at that he's probably a, like a robot or android or whatever, so it's like a Frankenstein type story. But but uh, uh, Vincent Price's character dies before he gets to give Edward Scissorhands, you know, hands. So he uh, Edward Scissorhands. Why he made him with scissor hands <laughs> in the first place? I think he all he already had the scissor hands since I think he took a robot that uh, chopped shit up. With scissors on its hands and designed it. Oh, yeah. It was some kind of a... Uh, the guy owned, like, a cookie yeah. factory. He made cookies. The inventor guy did. He made, like, machine that made so, cookies and shit. So Edward Scissorhands is a cookie machine. Yeah, or a cookie uh, chopper. He's a cookie something, cutter. Something, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a cookie cutter. But anyway, but yeah, and um, so Giant Epp is Edward Scissorhands. Great performance. Uh, one of his best. He just sets up at this old fucked up castle as it deteriorates over the years. You got Diane, Diane West from uh, Lost Boys who played the mom on there. Uh, she's going around selling Avon. I like how realistic they keep this movie as if it's really set like a real um, uh, suburb of America where somebody actually going around selling Avon like they would in real life. And so she finds Edward. She takes him down into the community. Uh, and that's when it becomes kind of like a fish out of water story. Kind of yeah. like the movie Thor or other movies He like almost that. gets uh, molested. <laughs> Poor, poor Edward. Yeah, he kind of almost gets molested. There's a while, like a <laughs> woman in the movie that wants to sleep with him. Uh, she gets turned on by scissors. Scissors turn her on for some reason. I, don't I think know it's why. like a haircut. Well, you know, she's opening up a haircut place. <laughs> different strokes for different folks. But anyway, so they, of course Edward's in town. But of course the people that really don't, they don't really accept him as one of their own or one of the people of the community or a friend or whatever. They just see him as like this new interesting thing because it's a suburbs. You know, there's bored housewives and husbands who just go to work, come home, eat a TV dinner, go to sleep. Same old shit. So when Edward comes in, he's like the new, you know, exciting thing. But then, you know, the moment something happens, you know, that he gets accused of, people automatically just turn on him, just like, you know, they would in real life. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, he gets a... Uh, you remember Anthony Michael Hall in this movie? In that movie, wasn't he a bully? Yeah, Anthony yeah. Michael Hall was a great asshole in this movie. This is amazing. His assholishness is... 
uncomparable. From uh, weird, from weird science to, to John uh, Cassash to Judd Nelson in the Breakfast Club. Exactly, yeah. he's he's transformed characters from the nerdy guy to Judd Nelson. It's true, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but but yeah. So Anthony Michael is a great asshole. When on the writer pretty much falls in love with Edward Scissorhands in the movie, and they're actually really dating in, in real life at the time, I believe. So it gives them good chemistry in the movie. Um. And so, uh, yeah, they get along good, and the comedy from the Fish Out of Water story works well. Now, I thought is, the, is Helen, the comedy flowed really well. Is no, Helen, Helen Bonham Carter is not in this, <laughs> if that's what you're asking. Helen Bonham Carter is not in those this Those years would, that's a those miracle. years would come. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, but anyway, and so one thing leads to another. Edward gets accused of something. He didn't, he didn't I mean, they just turn on him, like, automatically because when on the rider gets put up by Anthony Michael Hall, who's her boyfriend, no. to ask Edward Scissorhands to break in the... Anthony Michael Hall's own house, so he can um, help Anthony Michael Hall re, uh, retrieve some shit he's wanting to get out of his house and he doesn't want his dad to know about. And so, of course, Anthony Michael Hall and everybody runs off. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's uh, Edward uh, yeah, called, to take the blame. Caught with his scissors in his hands. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets uh, he gets arrested. Yeah, he gets the blame for him. But, yeah, one thing leads to another. Things are fucking up for Edward in the movie. Um of course, you root for the guy against all these so-called normal, quote-unquote normal people. Normies. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't like those normies. Normies. But, yeah. So, <laughs> one thing leads to another. Uh, Edward ends up having to go back and live in his castle, and him and Winona Ryder can't be together. Uh, so, it's a sad, depressing ending. And I like how the movie's told, like, the fairy tale type quality and the look of the movie. Like, Winona, you remember Winona Ryder in the beginning of it in, like, the old age makeup? Yes. Yes, yeah, the old age makeup is great. You see a lot of shitty old age makeup movies, but for her old age makeup, it's really good. And she's telling the story of the movie. Basically, what it leads into is like, where does the snow come from in the town? Because it's never snowed in this place before, and it's because Edward Scissorhands likes the ice sculpt, baby, and he makes a shitload of snow come through, uh, come into town from where he's sculpting ice with his scissor hands. So yeah, it's a sad ending. Him and the Rider don't get to be together, but at the same time, the movie's still great. Epically sad romance. And uh, did he'll, you, did he'll, you, he'll always be right up there in that, in that big old house. In that big old house. But yeah, <laughs> in his own world where he's safe. <laughs> See, he's getting emotional about it already. But, uh, I'm just thinking about the music. Uh, I thought the score was amazing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the score was who made the score? Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. He's the same guy who did the score in. For a number, another, number of other current yeah. movies and a lot of shit. Uh, very but, uh, good. but yeah, good. the score in this is my favorite Danny Elfman score. I think it's amazing. I love the score in this. The music is great. And one more thing. I really want, I really want to do a tribute to this movie. And, uh, I know Fox owns the copyright, and they're very strict on their copyright laws on here on, on YouTube. And, uh, I've sent them multiple messages, hoping, hopefully, they'll respond back to me and allow me to, uh, do the video. But, you know, whether or not I get to do it, though, I still love the movie and appreciate Fox releasing it. Everybody. Come so on, Fox, help yeah. us out. Yeah, help, help us out, Fox. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, all in all, yeah, just it's a great movie. Now, we'll jump into Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Shave. Kappa Shave. But yeah, the winner is Todd. <laughs> yeah, against uh, Borat, yeah. Yeah, Borat. Some people might <laughs> like that. The yeah, Borat dies in the movie. But anyway, we got Sweeney Todd here, which is a musical. And Tim Burton was making some shitty movies for a while, then kind of yeah. rebounded with Sweeney Todd. I really like Sweeney Todd. I'd give it four stars out of four. Uh, I think it's a great musical movie. Johnny Depp singing is not absolutely amazing because he's not really a singer. But um, a for effort. But it, but it is. I do think it is really good though in most of the scenes. Uh, where his character has to sing. I think he carries himself really well, though. Uh, and Helena Bonham Carter is, is great in the movie, and she's got a great look that fits in, like, the gothic Victorian type look of this movie. Um, to, um, Helen Bonham Carter. <laughs> yeah. And if she didn't wear a push-up bra in every movie, I don't know if I'd watch her. I don't know <laughs> if I'd watch her at. Well, he, he's a big fan. Uh, he's watched uh, the Harry Potter movies at least uh, <laughs> a thousand times. Listen, that bitch killed Sirius Black, and I'm going to get her back for that, so... Oh, maybe we'll he's see. not as big a fan as I thought he was. Okay. <laughs> but, but anyway. To, uh, Patronus or wherever it is. You know, I'm going to wing Guardian Leviosa or her Leviosa! wand of her ass or something. Wand in the ass. <laughs> okay, you got it. You, you already here, folks. I give Swinny Todd three out of five wands in the asses. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't it be uh, three? Well, three, uh, 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 meat pies. Yeah, meat pies in the ass. <laughs> in the ass. <laughs> but anyway, pretty much you got Johnny Depp who plays Swinny Todd. Um, he wants revenge on these people that caused his marriage to go to shit. 
And uh, so he opens up a shaving parlor, and every time somebody comes in, he fucks them up, slits the throat with his razor, dumps their bodies down a hole, and turns them into meat pies. So that right off the bat is uh, is great. The gore in the movie is deliberately over the top to the point of like a comedic level. So for anybody that likes gore, that's great. Um, That'd be a good meat pie. Yeah. <laughs> any kind of drawbacks to the movie? Anything you didn't like? Uh, uh some of the I'd have to say some of the actors weren't up to my speed. You know, I mean, it was a good movie and all, but I mean, beside, listen, everybody besides. See, I think uh, the girl's dad in the movie, the girl that was his, uh, his, his, uh, gosh, who was the guy from Alan uh, Rickman? Yeah, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Oh, yeah. Well, besides Alan Rickman, Rickman oh, besides Alan Rickman, Helen Bonham Carter, Giant. and Johnny Depp, everybody else I thought sucked. And uh, well, oh, I guess if you if you like Borat, then whatever. Completely disagree. I, I don't know. I gotta I gotta say I thought that everybody in this uh, kind of did did it. Did the acting as best as they could. Um, I mean, I thought everybody in, in, that did the video, I mean, bleh, spit it out here. And I thought everybody in Sweeney Todd was fine acting wise. I didn't even mind the little kid in the movie. You remember the little kid who like, worked with Borat? Uh, I didn't even mind him. The only little kid I remember in the movie was like, My movie. elixir is piss! <laughs> he killed his daughter in the movie. Um, or his wife. His wife. Yeah, his wife. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the movie, he kills his wife by accident, who he actually thought was dead in the movie, because Helen the Bonham Carter lied to him. He actually thought that she was dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he kills her by accident was, at the end of the movie. That was um, a bit tragic. And so, pretty much, after he finds out that Helen the Bonham Carter lied to him about his wife being dead, he grabs her ass and throws her in the fire. So if you don't like Helen the Bonham Carter, See you she, die, bitch. she dies violently <laughs> in the movie. And then, of course, there's this little boy that was friends with Helen the Bonham Carter in the movie. The little boy I mentioned a lot earlier. And he comes up behind Johnny Depp, and the movie ends with Johnny Depp's character getting his own throat slit by his own razor. So it's like, you know... Snooze, you lose. <laughs> everybody, It's pretty much a basic revenge story, which is kind of a little bit of the weakness of the movie. You, know, you can kind of see where the movie's going. But yeah. the performances are good, and I like the musical numbers really well. Um, I thought I knew it was going to be his. I knew that was his life <laughs> in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, and I, you can kind of see some of the twists coming. But it's a fun movie, and I really like the performances, and I like the idea, too. I thought the movie carried itself really well. Uh, but yeah, it's a basic revenge tale. Pretty much revenge gets you nowhere except up shit creek. And it's pretty much the message of this movie. So yeah, four stars for me. And um, uh, I guess, meat pies and ass. Yeah, meat pies. Uh, what was it? How many uh, meat pies did you give us? I can't. Oh, God. I'm just going to redo it now. Say yeah. I'll give it. How many meat pies and ass? Six and a half meat pies. <laughs> and Helen Bonham Carter's out ass. Out of out of Helen Bonham Carter's out of ass. I think. Yeah, six and a half out right, of ten. One, and that's one, generous. One to go. Oh, uh, from me. Okay. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Anybody that knows anything about this movie knows that Tim Burton, I believe, had to do this movie in order to get to do Frank and Weenie. Of course. Which is a better movie. My opinion on this movie, as far as it goes, um, it's got Johnny Depp and I, Helen Von M. Carter in it. <laughs> I think this is Johnny Depp's weakest performance in a Tim Burton movie. I don't think it's bad. I think he carries his stuff usually from decent to good, but he's not great in the movie. It kind of seems like he's just a little tired. Yeah. Uh, like he kind of a little bit doesn't want to be there, but kind of like, like he's just flowing with emotions. It's kind of like, it kind of seems like Tim Burton called Johnny Depp up one day and said, "Hey, hey John, they're making me do this, this uh, Wonderland movie, man. I need, movie, you, man. Man. I need, I need you, you, man. I need you." He's like, oh, God. I got Helen. Helen's not, already in, okay? Not again, Tim. <laughs> yeah. He's like, man, I'll try. <laughs> Off with his head. Yeah, so we got we got this. I literally like the I like the look of this movie, though. It's got a beautiful look to it. One of the problems I have with the movie is there's way too much CGI in this movie. This movie does feel like mm, a studio yeah. film. It really, to me, not until you feel like a studio film. It doesn't really have mm. Tim Burton's signature style. Or what you would think of for a Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland type movie. You don't it's, see many huge dragons in Tim Burton movies. All mystical and fan. I mean, at least not well, in this, well, not I think, this I, aspect. I, think, I, mean, I think the dragon would fit. It's just the overall like look of Wonderland. It's really, it's like, it's too CGI-ish. Yeah. It's like the studio wanting yeah. to make some big budget Chronicles of Narnia type movie out of the story. And we have uh, the guy from uh, the first Back to the Future. What's his name? Uh, oh, Crispin yeah. Glover's in Crispin this movie. Glover, yeah, yeah. I love, I love uh, Willard. Yeah, and Back to the Future. I love yeah. Crispin Glover. He's great in there. Helen the Bottom Carter plays the Red Queen. She's also really good. Um, the girl that plays Alice, though, she's really boring in this movie to me. What is her name? Uh, um, I'm not sure. I, I know she's really, on here. I never paid attention to her. <laughs> Mia uh, Mawa, wait, Mia was. Wazowski? Wachowski? Well, whatever her name is. I mean, we didn't care too much for her. <laughs> I, I just thought she was too bland. It's almost like she just, every time she's seen some amazing, she like every time she's seen some amazing in Wonder, Wonder, Wonderland, uh, she was just kind of like, 
She should, all, yeah, she should have <laughs> been the third Tweedley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like she's not blown away by anything. I'd probably be shitting myself in this situation, yeah. honestly. But according to this movie, she's <laughs> yeah. been there before. Yeah, so this movie pretty much goes more with the Through the Looking Glass sequel book to the original Alice in Wonderland. But uh, if you've read the Alice in Wonderland story and you're a big fan of it, you'll probably hate this movie, honestly, because there's nothing like the Alice in Wonderland story. But if you see this movie for what it is, this is not really a Tim Burton movie. It's really a Disney movie. It's a big-budget Chronicles of Narnia-type version of Alice in Wonderland for a family audience. And for that, it's a good movie. It's not great. I'd give it three stars out of four. It's good for just like a mindless family movie for uh, what it's targeted for for families. Um, it's got um, it's got a little bit of Tim Burton's touch here and there, but not really enough for me to really think of him as like being real hands on with this movie. It kind of seems like this movie was more studio handled, really, in my opinion. I'd have to give it. Uh, I I'm gonna go a bit lower than you. I'm gonna say two big ass heads <laughs> out of five. But yeah, I, I can I can see that opinion. I mean, I can perfectly understand why people hate this movie. Most people hate it because it's not really like the Alice in Wonderland story at all. If you've read the Alice in Wonderland story, it's just pretty much chaos. Everything mm -hmm. random just happens. There's no real plot to it. And with this movie, they try to give a plot, and it doesn't doesn't fit exactly right with this kind of story material. But uh, but it's still entertaining with some fun action scenes. And the dragon at the end, voiced by Christopher Lee, is cool. Christopher um, Lee, <laughs> yeah, God rest his soul. Yeah, Christopher Lee is great. I love Christopher Lee. But yeah, um, but yeah, as far as the movie goes, it's a good family Disney film, but just not a really good, just not a good Tim Burton movie. But for what it is, a Disney film, it it is good. But this doesn't really, this doesn't feel like a Tim Burton movie to me at all. Uh, it feels like a studio film. But yeah, I'd give it three stars out of four. So yeah, basically just to wrap up our videos here, I mean our video here. Um, shit. Oh man, it's fine, me. <laughs> we got a. Uh, Edward Scissorhands, I get four stars. Tim Burton masterpiece, in my opinion. You great well, what? Well, for Edward, I think I believe I gave it seven or eight. Uh, well, just scissor yeah. fingers out of ten. <laughs> this is a little bit off of his ratings. <laughs> we'll, we'll, Listen, we'll give seven, him the benefit eight. of the doubt. It, what do you like rating you know, them for? Though, first for time like, I watched it, it was probably a nine out of ten scissor fingers. What so. are you rating them from? Though, like one out of ten? Is that what you're doing? I'm usually just one out of ten scales. So, so what would you give it again? I'd give it a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Oh, okay. Sweeney Todd, I say four stars. Out of four, what would you give it? I think I'm pretty sure I gave it three out of five meat pies in the, in the, in the ass. ass. <laughs> okay. In Bonham Carter's ass. So wouldn't it really be like a three meat pies out of ten, though, that you do one to ten ratings? Uh, if I was going to do one, it'd probably be about four and a half out of ten. Four and a half out of ten? Yeah, yeah. I gave it 4.5 out of ten. Damn, you must hate it. Uh, oh, with Sweeney Todd? Yeah. yeah. Just didn't captivate me. I'm oh. sorry. Oh, he's dead to me. He's dead. Listen, we'll review. Hopefully, we can review the movies I do like by Tim Burton a lot. Sometimes. I mean, I loved Edward, so I love, there's a lot of other ones I like. We'll see. So anyway, we got Alice in Wonderland. I say three stars. Good family movie for Di good Disney movie, just not a good Tim Burton movie. Pretty much standard Chronicles of Narnia type movie, but not as good as Chronicles of Narnia either. But they try to they try to change the material of Alice in Wonderland to a Chronicles of Narnia type thing blockbuster type movie. I know a sequel to this is coming out. I don't really want a sequel to this, but shit, if it happens, it happens, and whatever, I'll check it out. But as a family movie, for what it is, it's a family Disney film. It's three stars. It's it's good. I think kids will Two enjoy and a half it. out of ten. <laughs> I think kids will enjoy it. What did you give it? Two and a half. He gives it two and a half. So pretty much two and a half um, two big, and big headed Helen the Bottom Carters big headed out of ten. Helen Bonham, beautiful Carters. Okay. Out of ten. So yeah, all in all, that's that's our video for the for these Tim Burton movies. And I'll, uh, this is um, Tim um, saying I'll see you guys later in the next Boomstick Review. And Krista Master, look me up, guys. Krista Master, <laughs> Sign it out. Yeah. <laughs>